Hello Space Cats and welcome back to my channel. Our universe is filled with many weird and wonderful things, but one of the most prettiest things in our universe is what are known as jellyfish galaxies. In this week's video, I'm gonna be talking about everything you need to know about this beautiful phenomena. Jellyfish galaxies are spiral galaxies with long ribbons of blue gas that resemble the tendrils of jellyfish. They're found by looking in the vicinity of clusters of galaxies where there exists huge reservoirs of hot gas. This hot gas is easily identifiable with X-ray telescopes from space. And as the galaxy is pulled into the galaxy cluster by its gravitational influence, the hot gas of the galaxy cluster strips away the gas within the spiral galaxy via a process known as ram pressure stripping. The external drag forces tear away the galaxy's gas like a powerful wind blowing tentacles of trailing material behind it. The bigger the galaxy cluster, the more pronounced the shape of the jellyfish galaxy because the galaxy cluster will have a stronger gravitational pull and also the hot gas within the galaxy cluster will also be denser. And this means that the pressure stripping the galaxy of its gas will also be stronger and it will result in a huge amount of star formation. When comparing galaxies within galaxy clusters to those um, that are outside of galaxy clusters, also known as field galaxies, the former have been observed to not form any new stars. They're known as red and dead because they contain old red stars, whereas newborn young stars tend to be blue in color. In order to form new stars, we require reservoirs of cold gas to gravitationally collapse and form a protostar. So it makes sense since the galaxies infalling into a galaxy cluster will be stripped of its cold gas and unable to form new stars. But what's kind of unclear is, however, in the long tendrils of jellyfish galaxies, they tend to be blue and that suggests lots of star formation is happening. Jellyfish galaxies might be the key to solving another mystery, that of intracluster light. Inside of galaxy clusters, there are these stars that don't belong to any galaxy. They're rogue stars. And like I keep saying, galaxy clusters have hot gas, which is too hot to form any stars. So one theory is that these rogue stars originate from jellyfish galaxies. Furthermore, jellyfish galaxies aren't falling into the core of a galaxy cluster like you might think. Instead, they seem to be moving all over the place. And actually, they're preferentially found on the outskirts of galaxy clusters, and scientists are still not sure why. It's unclear how star formation can happen in the jellyfish galaxy tails because the hot gas within the galaxy cluster should heat up the gas in the tail, leaving it unable to form new stars. So in order to understand why jellyfish galaxies are star forming in the outskirts and um, why cluster galaxies abruptly do not form stars, it's really important to study the inflow and the outflow of gas in galaxies. Because remember, it's the presence of cold gas that allows the formation of stars. While studying the jellyfish galaxy JO201, scientists noticed something very intriguing. The galaxy has a ring of star formation as seen in the optical and a cavity at the center. 
At the center of the galaxy is a supermassive black hole. And scientists believe that the ram pressure stripping may have funneled gas into the galaxy's center and provoked the black hole into blasting out material and sh a shockwave, creating this cavity. And this means that the galaxy has been hollowed out from the inside by the black hole as well as on the outside by the intracluster gas. In other words, the black hole is killing this jellyfish galaxy. In 2021, NASA will be launching the James Webb Space Telescope, which will be looking at jellyfish galaxy tails in much more detail and be able to produce the temperatures and the densities of the gas, as well as look for polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are an indicator of star formation. That's all for this week's episode. I'll put some extra reading material down below if you're interested in learning a bit more. And as usual, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share, and subscribe.